All right, so that is the trailer from the new movie, Monkey Beach. And we are now speaking with Grace Dove, who stars in the movie. Thank you so much for joining us today, Grace. Of course, happy to be here. Okay, so t- congratulations first off on all your achievements. I was just saying, I haven't chatted with you for five years when you first starred in uh, your role back in 2005 as uh, Hugh Glass's wife, um, Leonardo DiCaprio in the 2015 movie The Revenant. Wow, what a journey you've been on since then. Tell us about your your journey. I can't believe it's been five years already since then. Um you know, I gave myself when I went to acting school back in 2010, I gave myself the goal of five years without, you know, questioning what I was doing without backing out of my dreams. Um, because I felt like everyone had told me how hard this industry is. And I wanted to make sure that I wasn't giving up when times are, you know, down. And when I did the revenant, it was like, okay, if there's a time to quit, it's when you're up. And at that point, I was like, No, okay, I got to keep doing this. I think that I have a real uh, shot. And so then, uh, you know, then now the last five years, every year is, it's still as challenging as the last, but it it has been uh, more rewarding and uh, a lot more um, opportunities. So your two roles that you were I was just thinking about was the role that you also played as Ricky in the 2018 film How It Ends. I watched the whole series. I was so excited to see you in that role. And it's funny, those roles were quite different. What did you love about playing those two different roles? Yeah, I loved Ricky. She will go down um, as one of my favorite characters forever because... You know, I related to her, but also so many things about her was different, which I love. Um, And I really felt like for me, that was such a pivotal moment where I was able to really uh, stand up for our people and make sure that we're being represented in a good way and like really test my voice in standing up and saying, you know, this isn't quite authentic or we can work on this and uh, really collaborated a lot with the with the director with the writer with the producers to make this character really full and um you know working alongside Forrest Whitaker he's he's one of my great mentors and just watching him work in a scene watching the way that he will come at me and say the line different each time with different intention and then also like how humble and grounded he is and, and how much he supported me like it just really showed me um, that I have a, a place in this industry. With the new movie Monkey Beach, it's making all kinds of, of buzz. Are you surprised from the response from all your fans? I am quite shocked and I shouldn't be. And I don't know, you know, what that is. But whenever you do a film, like you hope that people will watch it, right? You hope that you'll get support. But at the same time, you never know. Um, I didn't know that we would be opening in theaters across Canada. I didn't know that we'd be selling out theaters and be the only movie selling out theaters um, during this time. And and it's not just Indigenous people. Like, I've been having such good conversations of non-Indigenous um, allies and, you know, friends and family and people from all around Turtle Island having conversations about what Monkey Beach brought up in them and you know how it made them feel when it comes to big things like reconciliation and how do we move forward together and all these really big conversations are coming out of a movie and that is so beautiful and and um i know that that's a big part of why i do this work it's so important and so healing in this time do you feel a responsibility to to hold up that voice to keep the conversations going yeah, very much so. Uh, I was just listening to a podcast this morning and she was talking about how, you know, as artists and once we build a platform and become recognized, then it's our responsibility. We have to become an activist. We have to start, you know, standing up for those that can't. And I've felt that um, since I did The Revenant, all of a sudden I had a big platform and uh and people want to, you know, hear, they want to talk to me about these kind of things. And now I think that that's a really beautiful thing. And I'm, I'm up for the challenge. Um, who are some of your inspirations on on finding that voice and being a little bit more, I guess, uh, political? Would that be the right word? 
Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, watching, yeah, well, watching, uh, you know, someone like uh, Buffy St. Marie, who has been fighting the power and, you know, fighting the man and fighting all these uh, uh, corporations, you know, she's been doing that since way, way back. She was doing that before I was even born. Mm -hmm. And, and knowing that, you know, she's been blacklisted. Um, I was also talking recently about uh, Sashin uh, Little Feather, who accepted um, an award at the Oscars back in like it was the 60s. Um, and, mm-hmm. you know, she got blacklisted from the industry because she went up and, and made this speech about how it, the there's so much violence still against Indigenous peoples and Native Americans and we're not being represented properly in the film industry and all this stuff. And mm-hmm. like seeing the work that they've done, I just know that I have to uh, kind of take take it on and, and keep and keep rising with it. Um, do you think there still needs to be work done in those roles? Yeah, of course. There, until we're completely telling our own stories, until we're completely doing things like Monkey Beach, where you know it's an Indigenous writer, an Indigenous director, and 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 actually authentic Indigenous actors. You know, until we're doing that all the time, there's still going to be. Uh, things wrong you know i think that as long as we're not telling our stories and there's going to be problems so that's why we need to be in every room we need to be in the writer's room and starting on uh the right foot when it comes to you know our stories and our proper representation all right tell us the experience that you went through with uh monkey beach and and your the whole process of where you were filming um what's your highlights that you can share with us Oh, goodness. Every day was such a highlight. I mean, it was a lot of work, but being able to go to set every day for over 30 days and practice my craft and show up in such a vulnerable and real way, um, it was so life changing for me, as every role has been, truly. Like, I don't say it lightly, but my life changes every single time because these characters bring something to my spirit that I I haven't experienced before, you know? Um and so we filmed up in Kitimat um, on the Heisla territory where the book was created by Eden Robinson. And, and Loretta, our director, was very um, adamant about that. She pushed and she made sure that we filmed up there because she knew, you know, as similar to the book, that the, the power in the land, the power in the water, the power in the people, all that is part of Monkey Beach. So we had to go and do it in a good way. And... Um, you know, there was, I had never seen anything like it. It's so many Indigenous peoples around, all making a movie. You know, we had Indigenous peoples in, in all, in most of the roles. And um, just feeling like, you know, I don't have to start on day one kind of setting boundaries about how, you know, you talk to an Indigenous person or what, you know, kind of like putting up that safety bubble. Mm-hmm. Instead, I walked in there and was just like, oh, we all know. We, we have these lived experiences. And you kind of can get past that first surface level conversations and get right to you know the meat of Mm. what we're trying to do in a movie like monkey beach had you read the book before the role i had yeah um how did you how did you i guess get into character how did you how did you train for that uh you know the internet is amazing because like i just got to work immediately and started from the bottom and started from the roots and started reading about um, you know, the Haisla people and their culture and their language and what, you know, the struggles they've been going through with, um, you know, with the pipeline and, and just trying to figure out as much as I could about their ancestors and, and all the way to modern day. And then, of course, rereading the book and, and, and then also just finding a lot of clues and hints in the writing, because if a script is well done, every, a lot of what you need is just in the words and you just need to dissect it. And, and find what is going on with that characters. All right. So COVID-19, of course, made lots of waves. And I'm sure it affected you and your industry. How have you been managing through through this whole, whole point in time? Uh, I think it was very hard the first few months, as it was for everyone. The uncertainty, the fear for my family, for not necessarily myself, but those that are weaker, um, you know, or more vulnerable. And... It just came to the point where, you know, for my own mental health, I had to address, you know, what I have already and what I'm grateful for and realizing, okay, you know, just because I have to stay inside for a few months, 
it's not the end of the world and and how do i just try to stay you know as helpful and and supportive of of my family and those people that are um, at risk and so got through you know every day was a struggle but at the same time i just know that like i have a lot already and i'm very you know grateful for all that i have and so just tried to lay low and now all of a sudden like everything just came back it's just happening um, my team in la is now back and i'm swimming in auditions and opportunity and you know because everyone because everything was put on hold i think everyone had a chance to to really look yeah. inside and go like what is next what do i really want what do i value and so i think a lot of people are i don't know have a new fire inside them mm -hmm. i think and so i can see that right now and the opportunities um, that are coming my way I, I i completely agree there's so many indigenous people just kind of rising from all different angles and places and new things happening it's really exciting to see yeah. and watch and so the question is what is next for you <laughs> Oh, man, it's kind of wild. Like 2020 is turning into, a, you know, a, a really good year for me in the sense of uh, self-development and exploration. Um, I've had a number of really big moments in my uh, acting career just in the last few weeks um, with auditions and opportunities. And like, I already have uh, two movies lined up for next year, both offered to me, both leads, and neither were the script wasn't specifically for Indigenous or an Indigenous role. Like, it's just, it's just a really great script. And they're going, I think that, you know, both of these directors being non-Indigenous, people are starting to realize that we can fit into any story because we have always been here and we are still here mm -hmm. and that I can be a modern person. You know, I can be an, uh, a hero. I can be all these things. And now because of the movement and the rise and the energy directors are going, Oh, what if, what if we plug, you know, both of them had seen my how it ends role and, and they went, you know, when I saw you in that role, I just went, wow, mm -hmm. she can, she can lead my film. And uh, so I think like, it's so gradual. Things take so much time. I've been doing this now for 10 years mm -hmm. and now we're just starting to, you know, lift into next year. So now, um, yeah, I have a bunch of projects to look forward to and, you know, it's still months away. So I just have to like stay grounded and keep on my everyday hustle. Do you get to hear what those projects are? <laughs> Not in the moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I tried to. I tried. I tried to sneak it in. Um, okay. Well, that sounds so exciting. And now I totally lost my train of thought. I was going to ask you another question. Oh yeah. So is there just as before I let you go? It, do you do you find that there is a difference between um, acting in with Canadian directors and actors versus um, being a, a Canadian actress in the states? Do do you see the, the there's any differences out there? I think the biggest difference is working with um, indigenous directors and non-indigenous directors, really, because indigenous directors like Loretta, you know, she's more sensitive to our protocols and our pacing and our timing. Like, you know, if something's not working out, it's not just hammer time. It's like, let's settle and really work this through in a quiet, you know, grounded way rather than like yelling and all this up, you know, this kind of stuff that I've seen with other non-indigenous directors. And when I go to the States and when I work there, I find um, just having to, yeah, explain myself a bit more. Like they don't always know what First Nations even is, mm -hmm. right? Like when I first went, started going down there a few years ago, it was like explaining that yeah. basically, you know, we that we're similar to Native American. Like yeah. we're all, you know, we're the first peoples. Like having to have <laughs> that whole conversation, I'm just like, Okay, so that's where we're starting. So yeah. that's like kind of what I was saying, like you can't get into all the real, the real stuff because you're still explaining even who who we are yeah. as just like one people, right? Um, but but that's changing. I really I really hope that you know I'm I'm part of that and that we keep seeing um, uh, our recognition. Grace, it's so great to to chat with you and see everything that you're doing. It's so fun watching you. Uh, explode in your career it's been so exciting to see now if people want to follow along with what's next with you where can they go where can they find out all the new information about you 
Um, I know this is a younger generation thing, so I don't know if the older people are going to be on Instagram, but <laughs> I, I love Instagram as a filmmaker, as an artist. Like I, I love sharing photos and keeping people up to date because they don't know what it's like to be an actor. And I love sharing insights of like, it is not all glamour. It's barely glamour. You know, it's mostly hustle. It's mostly me working alone in my apartment every day on auditions. Um, it's learning, you know, I learned uh, 20 pages over the weekend that happens every weekend like it's just it's just crazy and so as well I am on um, Facebook uh, under both are Grace Dove and Twitter and so the social media I try to I try to keep up with so I can share my struggles and share the successes all right well it's so great to chat with you and we'll hopefully chat with you again soon for your next roles sounds great thank you have a great day